The question has been posed to me, why does the Apostle Paul so clearly differ with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Apostle Peter, and pretty much the rest of the Scriptures? Why does Paul almost seem to make himself a heretic by saying, you can eat the meat offered and sacrificed unto idols, but you, you know, you're free from the law, you don't have to circumcise your children. Uh, wh why does he say these things when Jesus said absolutely nothing about the Christian being free from the law? That was the question posed by a particular brother in Christ, to which I would say, show me one time in the Gospels where Jesus even speaks to a Christian. Um, I believe that when Paul spoke, uh, according to 2 Peter, you like Peter, I know that, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 through 16, that Paul's epistles are Scripture. By Scripture, I mean the words of God. That Paul and Peter were not just men who could be wrong in their epistles, but that they were holy men of God, who spake as the oracles of God, who were quite literally, when putting pen to paper, just as... Jeremiah, when he preached, speaking the word of God. Peter believed that. Some Christians do not. Um, I'm not going to get into it, but to sum up my belief, I believe that from Genesis in the beginning to Revelations, amen, is the very spoken word of God. Um, I used King James Bible. I'm not going to get into that right now, but I'm going to speak with this regard. The reason why Peter, Paul differed is because they had two different Gospels, and they agreed to go two different ways. Also, the reason why Jesus Christ and Paul clearly differ is because Paul clearly had a different Gospel. It was the Gospel of the grace of God. Jesus was preaching the Gospel of the Kingdom. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a quote from a study, and uh, by the way, just saying, oh, you're just believing in men and, and what men say. I don't believe what men say. I compare scripture with scripture. I'm merely reading uh, from, from a study, and the scripture verses will be posted everywhere. Maybe not at the same time, but if you study diligently, look up the passages and really read what the book's saying, I think you'll understand very clearly that we are to compare scripture with scripture, and we are to rightly divide the word of truth. Now, for those of you who don't believe in Paul, I guess you have to take verses out of there. Um, this, is, this is what I got to say. The gospel of the kingdom was preached by John the Baptist, Jesus Christ, and his disciples. Now, I'm reading from a study done, done, done in my church. Okay, just to let you know. Announcing the king, that the king was ready to establish his kingdom. It was the good news of national, note, national redemption and spiritual blessings in earthly places. It called men to repent and believe that Jesus was the Son of God and the King of Israel. Paul, on the other hand, was given the gospel of the grace of God. It was directly given to him by Jesus Christ, announcing that the good news of personal salvation, not national redemption, was available unto the Gentiles, and the Jews by and large, uh, that they had spiritual blessings in heavenly places, not spiritual blessings in earthly places. And it, he, the, his gospel of the grace of God uh, caused men to repent and believe in the blood atonement and the resurrection of Christ. Paul called this my gospel. And obedience to this gospel resulted in a person being spiritually justified, sealed by the Holy Spirit of God, eternally secure, raised up and seated together with Him in heavenly places, and placed in Jesus Christ, baptized into the body of Christ. Um, Paul also does not require water baptism, whereas Jesus requires water baptism. Um, healings and other apostolic signs were a major accompaniment with the gospel of the kingdom. Uh, also, healing and other apostolic signs uh, were a minor accompaniment for the majority of Paul's epistles. Um, after Israel rejected outright the gospel, uh, you know, God started turning his direct mission from preaching a physical kingdom to the Jews and national repentance, which is what Peter meant when he said, repent. 
save yourselves. Wait a second, I'm saved by grace through faith. No, Peter's saying, save yourselves, not from hell, but from this untoward generation. Uh, it's, it's very evident that if we rightly divide the scriptures, that there are two different gospels. Uh, Peter and Paul had two different gospels. Paul had the gospel of the uncircumcision. Peter had the gospel of the circumcision. Um, also getting to the difference between the, Jesus' gospel of the kingdom and Paul's gospel of the grace of God. Uh, the gospel of the kingdom provided for conditional relationship with Christ. Whereas Paul's gospel of the grace of God provided for an unconditional relationship with Christ. Um, Jesus required faith and, you are right in saying this, obedience to the law to be saved. Whereas Paul's gospel only requires faith in Christ Jesus to be saved. Um, you know, at the beginning of the church age, both gospels were accompanied by signs and miracles in order to persuade the unbelieving Jews. Uh, the Jews require a sign. In Paul's case, to validate that he had a gospel given unto him to preach to the Gentiles that was hidden from every other prophet, hidden from the Jews, hidden from every single other thing, and was kept hidden throughout all the ages, that this was a special unction of God, a special gift, a special gospel, uh, a special dispensation, if you would, of time. Um, However, the Jews continued to reject Paul's gospel in one city after another. Uh, the signs and miracles slowly diminished. If you can compare and contrast Paul, Paul's early works, a uh, young man fell off of a roof during a sermon because he fell asleep. Paul went over and raised him from the dead. Whereas in the end of Paul's ministry, he's writing unto Timothy and, you know, you know, saying, I have a doctor with me, I'm glad my doctor's with me, and giving him remedies for Timothy's stomach ailings. Now, why couldn't Timothy just say, you know, I have spoken with my Heavenly Father and you are to be healed? Uh, we, we very plainly see that Paul is in constant need of a doctor, i.e. Luke, I believe, and why couldn't he just be healed of himself? So, you know, it comes to the same thing that the Pharisees said to Jesus, you know, Heal thyself, bring thyself down from the cross. Uh, you know, there's something different going on about Jesus Christ on that cross. And there's something different going on about Jesus Christ in that prison. Um, after a few short years after, Jesus, uh, after Paul's uh, final death, you know, Jerusalem was overheaved. The Jews were scattered abroad, and only now are we seeing the Jews coming back together. And only now are we starting to see maybe the coming of that particular kingdom. Um, I believe wholeheartedly that there is a difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. That the kingdom of heaven is a spiritual kingdom. Uh, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is, the kingdom of God rather, is within you. And that the kingdom of heaven is a physical, on earth ruling of God in the flesh on a throne. And that one day these kingdoms will become one. Uh, you also spoke about, um, you know, many of us who believe that Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles and that he had a particular message to preach to the Gentiles, which is basically the church age and faith in Jesus Christ, and that God is now turning from the Jew to the Gentile, that belief in that is inherently false. You also said that those of us who believe in that have difficulties with sin and that we are not living truly holy or righteous lives. Um, I would wholeheartedly agree and say, are you living a holy and righteous life? Uh, sin, as we all know, is residing within every man. Um, now, I know you may think that I'm taking things out of context with what you said, but I want to reiterate that there is a difference between your state in this world as a Christian and your standing before the throne of God. Uh, our standing, the heavenly reality, is believer in Christ. Our state is Christ is in the believer. Our standing is we are sons of God. Our state is we are servants of God. Our standing is we are heirs of God. Our state is we are joint heirs with Christ. Um, our standing is a gift received because of faith. Our state is a reward because of faithfulness. Uh, Christ is in me, perfecting me. I'm supposed to work out my salvation with fear and trembling. But Christ in me is doing that work of perfecting me. And one day he will complete the work and give me a new body and quicken this flesh. But 
In Christ, I'm already seated in those heavenly places. In Christ, I'm already perfect and holy. In Christ, I am already perfect.